So welcome back to Tech Talks. Today we have Arushi Nath. And Arushi, you're a, a grade eight student. What school do you go to? I go to a middle school called Toronto West. Okay, and what, um, tell us about, I understand you're doing some pretty incredible research. Tell us about the research that you're doing. For sure. So my research is all about plant tree defense. And plant tree defense is about protecting the earth from objects outside its atmosphere like asteroids. Mm -hmm. And asteroids are simply um, rocky elements from the formation of our solar system. Okay, so, so your, your work, you're, you're actually helping to protect planet Earth from asteroids. Okay. Yes, that is correct. Okay. How, do you, how, how are you doing that? For sure, so um, what I'm doing is uh, my goal was to detect unknown asteroids in the sky because that's the first step to actually preventing an asteroid from impacting the Earth. So okay. what I did um, is because I know that um, to find unknown asteroids, I need to look at the sky. So what I did is I took images of the sky from telescopes located all around the world. Mm -hmm. So these are remote telescopes that can be controlled just from my home. Okay, and so there's there's online access. Can any of us access this this online data from these telescopes? Yeah, for sure. Lots of telescopes give um, free telescope time so that you can use their telescopes to take images of whatever part of the sky you want. Wow. Okay, so you're accessing these telescopes all over the world. You're you're looking at the sky. What are you looking for to protect us from asteroids? For sure. So um, I took images of the night sky, and what I'm looking for is unknown asteroids. So asteroids that have not been detected yet. Mm -hmm. So what I did to find those asteroids is that I first looked at the image and tried to remove all the asteroids that were already known to us. So this could include known stars as well as known asteroids. Mm -hmm. So to find these known objects, I queried um, online databases that are again for use for the general public. And these data sets was an asteroid data set called the NASA Horizons database. Um, and there was also um, a Wait, star data let, set. Let's get the name proper. So I, I missed the name. What's it called, this asteroid database? For sure. So the asteroid database is called the NASA Horizons database. NASA Horizons database. Okay, so you, you're tapping into NASA here and they've got this Horizons database. And, and it tells you about the, the known asteroids. Yes, for sure. Because um, known asteroids, one problem is that asteroids are always moving about in the sky. So what this NASA Horizons does is it's able to look at, um, it already knows the orbit of all the known asteroids. So at any given time, it's able to predict at what position the asteroid will be in. Okay. So, so then it, it sounds like a process of elimination. So you're, you, you've, you've got a map of the known stars, you've got a map of the known asteroids, and then I guess it's whatever's left over are the unknown asteroids. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Of course, I had to also remove some noise in my image, which I did using simple middle school math skills like standard deviation and mean. And how do you use those middle school math skills? Because I didn't do asteroid research when I was in middle school math. It's actually, um, the math skills I used have nothing to do with um, sky or asteroids. So what I did is I had eliminated all known stars and all known as asteroids. Okay. So what was remaining in my image was either noise or um, an unknown asteroid. So okay. how did, exactly did I differentiate between those two? Um, well, I know that um, noise is often very bright pixels um, scattered around the image, while um, known asteroids will be a clump of um, bright pixels in the image, which have varying brightnesses. So this way, I was able to use standard deviation, this spot that spread in brightness that I was able to see. And then um, if they had a higher enough standard deviation, I classified them as possible asteroid candidates. Wow. OK. So standard deviation is, you know, it's, it's statistical work. And were you learning about standard deviation in grade eight math? Oh, yeah, actually, I was in grade, um, at the end of grade seven when I was doing this. And um, the teacher had touched upon on mean and a bit of standard deviation. 
Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, why not use this in my project to show that all, even middle school, even youth kids can um, solve these type of big problems. And have you found any asteroids yet using your, your method? Using my algorithm, I was able to find three preliminary asteroids, which mm -hmm. is basically the first detection of an asteroid. Um, but for it to move on to the second stage, um, that asteroid has to be detected again in the next seven or eight days, which unfortunately did not happen for me. So these asteroids remain, remain pre preliminary asteroids and did not move on to the next stages. Um, but hopefully by looking at more images, I might be able to actually detect a new asteroid. Wow. And so if, if you get this asteroid and it's at a preliminary stage, does that mean that we've lost contact with the asteroid? Or does that mean that it wasn't actually an asteroid? Or does that mean, hey, it's heading for us and it's going to hit the Earth pretty soon? Um, for sure. So what this means, if we don't have any other detection of the asteroid, that would have been um, a false positive. So the asteroid actually does not exist, even though it might resemble an asteroid through the image. Okay, so so the three preliminary asteroid images that you know you detected probably were not asteroids. Yes, that is correct. Okay, good. So there's so I don't have to start wearing a hard hat around. <laughs> no, you don't. No. Do you think a hard hat would actually help me if an asteroid hits the Earth? I do not think so, um, especially because um, asteroids um, are huge sometimes. They can also be small, but mm -hmm. at the velocity that they're going to be hitting the Earth, it's, if you're um, right under an asteroid, there's no way a helmet would help you. Okay, well, that's good to know. So there's been a number of movies, actually, about asteroids hitting Earth, and they send up uh, people to, to go protect the Earth from asteroids. Do you think that's realistic that one day maybe one of these asteroids that you detect uh, will have to send up people in a rocket to try to divert that asteroid? Well, for the first part, um, yes, I definitely think it's possible that an asteroid would hit the Earth. Mm. Um, actually, um, just recently, a couple of months ago, um, there was an asteroid which entered the Earth's atmosphere. Um, so I was able to view it uh, right next to the CN Tower, actually. Um, and it's actually this only the sixth um, asteroid that was previously detected before it entered our atmosphere. And um, it, fall, it luckily did not cause any damages, and it fell in Lake Ontario. But this shows that asteroid collisions have happened and will happen in the future. And um, to deflect these asteroids or to make sure these asteroids do not impact the Earth, there are many techniques. Um, Sending people um, in a spacecraft is slightly unrealistic, I think, in my point of view, because um, people won't be any help um, when you're trying to deflect an asteroid. It's more of the technology that we've created. And actually, currently, um, we have done missions to go and try to impact other asteroids and try to change their orbit to mm -hmm. make sure that they, um, in the future, maybe if an asteroid is on collision path with the Earth, and we know about it uh, many years in advance, then if we change its orbit just a little bit, that means that in the long run, it's the change in orbit will be visible enough so it doesn't impact the Earth. And the re most recent mission to test this has been the DART mission, um, that, which stands for a Double Asteroid Redirection Test Mission, which was a mission carried out by NASA to try and um, use a kinetic impactor. So basically, they just impacted an asteroid straight on with a spacecraft um and changed its orbital path wow so this this dart project was actually and i and i you know i'm kind of glad that they're not sending people up because the actors that they'd send to, up to you know divert these asteroids tend to be old guys you know i think they just figure the old guys yeah. are, are worth sacrificing you know they're old they've lived a good life so they send up billy bob thornton or bruce willis or somebody um you know and not that I wouldn't want to volunteer, but it's better that if you could do it remotely. Um, but this DART mission, was it successful in helping to divert an asteroid from Earth? Yes, the DART mission was successful. Um, originally, it, changed, um, it planned to change and reduce the orbital period of this asteroid by around 70 seconds. Though it actually ended up um, reducing it by 28 minutes, which showed how effective the mission actually was. And actually, currently, I'm working on another project which aims to try to measure the changes um, in this mission. 
So I've been taking several images of this asteroid, which is actually called Didymos. So I've been taking several of them before the impact. Um, this was to try to measure some baseline um, orbital period of the asteroid. And um, now I'm taking several observations of the asteroid after the DART impact to try to measure what changes have occurred in this um, asteroid system. Wow. And when we're talking about seconds and minutes of diversion, we're talking about degrees, not time, right? Oh, no. In this case, we're talking about time. Okay. Um, because basically it um it reduced the time it took the asteroid to orbit around um the sun by 28 minutes. Oh, I see. Okay. And so this is really fascinating work. And I want to thank you, you know, as as a as a resident of Earth, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing. And and hopefully one day you and, and others will be able to save us from the next asteroid. I know the Gulf of Mexico was a big asteroid hit. Uh, Sudbury, the Nickel Basin in Sudbury was a big asteroid hit. So the Earth has been pummeled by asteroids in the past, and it usually in, leads to a mass extinction. Uh, so the work that you're doing is actually, you know, potentially life-saving uh, for millions and millions of people. Um, you've done some other work as well. Tell me about your last research project around the trees and the environment. For sure. Um so this is actually a project that I did about one or two years ago. Mm -hmm. So my goal was to measure the tree density. So the amount of trees in different parks around my neighborhood in Toronto. So what I did is I used images from satellites to get a sky view of these different parks. And after that, I was able to use an algorithm to measure how many trees or the tree density of these parks. And I tested about um, 12 to 15 parks in my neighborhood. And actually, I found out that normally it was the smaller parks, which had the higher tree density, while the bigger parks might have a slightly lower tree density, hmm. which shows how it's important to have many small parks in a city. Wow, that's really interesting, you know, and, and we all breathe the air that those trees, you know, the oxygen that those trees produce. Yes. So thank you for doing that. You know what? It's absolutely incredible, the work that you're doing. You know, you started this asteroid research, you said in grade seven, you're in grade eight now, and you're work, continuing to work on that. I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to do in grade nine. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you so much for being here and part of our Tech Talk. It's always a pleasure. Thanks. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me ask you one other question, too. Okay. Um, we may throw this in. You were a legislative page yes, at that's Queens Park. Tell me about that experience, you know, and, and, you know, just so that people, especially young people like yourself, who are interested in being a legislative page can think about that as an, as an option or, an, uh, and, you know, potential adventure for them. For sure. Um, I think my experience um, at the Ontario Legislative Assembly for two weeks was an amazing opportunity. Um, I was able to see how the government um, and the opposition debated um, how bills were made, how they had to have several readings before they passed. And it was a great experience overall. Um, I had, I made several friends there um, and friends I imagine I'll be keeping for a very long time. Um, but also one thing is um, I think this experience taught me that while youths might not have a vote when it comes to elections, we also have a voice and that voice I've learned to use. And which is why, for example, this summer, I also campaigned for different city councillors in my ward who had goals and visions similar to mine. Wonderful. That's great. Well, I'm glad you're getting involved with the democratic process, and I hope you inspire lots of other young people because democracy is a participatory project, and it only works when people participate. So thank Definitely. you so much for doing yeah. that. And Rushi, thank you for being here and part of our Tech Talk. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow me on social media and we'll see you next week for more Tech Talks.